This building was built in 1846 as an armory, became known as the Robbins and Lawrence Armory. Its function in the early part of the uh, 1850s was to produce muskets for the United States government as well as for Britain. They also became builders of machine tools. The term machine tool really didn't exist yet. Uh, later on, it became a cotton mill. Sewing machines and typewriters were built here. It ultimately became a power generation facility. What happened once they got the or first order for 10,000 guns, they had to create another system of manufacture. And they added the word precision to the equation. So they started doing things like pattern tracing. Today we would call them tracer lathes or copy lathes. Those things begin to morph again over time uh, to where we get to CNC. And that's what we're telling the story. We're telling that story from made by hand to made by machine to where we become efficient using more CNC technology and, and machine tools. We only have pictures and articles about the water wheel that existed here. So by creating this model that we see behind me, again, adds to the story and the history. We believe that seeing physical objects is a much better way to appreciate history than looking at a photograph. So this really adds to our ability to tell that story of how water power was really the primary motive behind putting the factory here and driving the factory for many years. The actual real technical difficulties with this project, it wasn't so much on the components themselves. If you look at each component in this water wheel, it's very simplistic, right? Every component is very easy. Where it gets difficult is integrating that all together and making it assemble, programming all that, and then we're not just doing it on one machine. We're doing it on the Haas machines as well as a three-axis router to cut the wood components. And working with tolerances with wood is very different than metal. Right? So you got to understand how those materials work together uh, to create an assembly that you know, is not only cool to look at, but will last a long time. The gear sections on the water wheel, uh, the main center hubs, all of that was machined on our Haas uh, VF2 3-axis. We used a lot of our dynamic tool paths on there. That contrast between metal and wood working together to, to create such a nice piece. I think this Mastercam Haas relationship, it's, it's really important for things like this. We would have never been exposed to an incredible organization like this, an incredible facility like this, and get to be a part of a project as cool as this without, without that partnership, without working with people in the industry that are, that are doing really cool things. The opportunities today for young people in manufacturing are remarkable. The museum had a need to be relevant, and manufacturing has a need for the entry of next generations, and we're able to use this collection as a backdrop to spur imagination of young people and get involved in a space where they can develop awareness for career opportunities. The fact that these companies could come together and imagine a project, and then really master cam to deliver the project, to engineer it and to fabricate it. I would say with all humility, the museum is just the beneficiary. I'm hoping that we'll be able to collaborate more with master cam, maybe perhaps using their software here in some of our workshops. Master cam being a leader in CAD cam software uh, would be a real asset uh, as a partner.